Pops, what's up? It's Kamari Fang here, and welcome back to Coffee Crystals and Tunes, where I drink a cup of coffee, make crystal necklaces, and tell you pups about some of my favorite tunes. Like last week, we have five songs to go through, so let's get things started with one of my once favorite bands. This is Fleur de Lis by Batar. For those of you who don't know, Batar was a Swedish metal band who gave themselves the subgenre of art metal. I had the joy of interacting with them on many occasions, as well as the wondrous knowledge of knowing that they actually tuned into my stuff whenever I talked about them. I still have that joy, actually, because their guitarists still remember who I am. But returning to the task at hand, Fleur de Lis was the follow-up single to Risk Breaker. The lyrics were about Patrick Leonhardt's grandmother who had passed away before the song was made, and someone he was really close to. The song opens with a mournful and beautiful piano melody, but then begins to pick up the intensity as the song continues, i.e. the guitars, the drums, the bass, and it all builds to this very intense ending, both with the guitar solos and with uh, Seb's last chorus. I always loved this song, and it kind of felt like in their rebirth era, they kind of left it behind them. But you can, at the very least, watch the music video now, so check this one out if you're interested. And since I brought up a Swedish metal band, why not bring up another one? This is Fire's Purposes to Burn by Kerbera. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, by the way, I'm on a bit of a metal kick today. Anyways, if you've been following me for a long time, you may think that this group sounds familiar. And they should. Because back in 2016, they made one of my favorite songs of the year called From Hero to Villain. Which, like this song, comes off of their People Like You album. And from re-listening to it, I have concluded that I really like concept records that are centered around breakups. Come on, no sharp edges allowed. Fire's Purpose is to Burn is centered around the narrator, so-called lover, and decides to end everything for good. <clears throat> the act is compared to committing arson, which I think was pretty clever of Freddie Hale, aka the guy who opens up the song. And as usual, his harmonies with Sig are just wonderful. Not a whole lot to add outside of that. Check this one out, as well as the album for that matter. And taking a break from the metal now, we have One Monster and Infinity by Super M. Check it out. This is going so much better than last week. If you follow me, then you know that I've referenced this song in my year-end list for 2020, but I never really went into my thoughts about it. Figured now would be a good time for it. And seeing as how it's here, I don't think it'll surprise anybody when I say that this is one of my favorite K-pop songs. If not, my most favorite. Super M was one of the new acts that was signed to SM Records, aka one of the big three in South Korea. It takes a reverse approach to usual K-pop, that being that the lyrics are mostly in English and only have some bits of Korean in them. The song is about Super M answering the challenge of reaching their goals. Take your shots, do what you can to stop me, I will make it. A mood that all members of the group are able to match. The production is, well, stellar for lack of a better word. The synth work in this song would be jarring if it was attached to uh, any other lyrical concept and matched with any other group, I'd imagine. It's a wonderful experience, one I hope y'all enjoy as much as I do. And moving back to metal, as well as a few musicians you've already seen today, this is Lemon Blood by Spock. these things all the time. For anyone who missed the pub tunes yesterday, this is the project where Seik from Kerbera teams up with the guitars from Batar. Anyway, Spuck released two songs over the course of the last year. This song, Lemon Blood, was released before the start of the new year. And between the two singles, this is the one that took a while to warm up to. You see, when Viral Potential, their first single, came out, I was expecting it to sound like a mashup of styles between Batar and Kerbera, and that's definitely not what we got. There was a certain level of disappointment when this song came out, and that's because that's what this song sounds like. Not that that's a bad thing, oh, no, 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 no. Combining synth work with characterized lyricism about a toxic relationship was a masterful idea, and it was a nice little combination of styles. I'm, of course, skimming over everything else, namely the guitars in this song, which are admittedly not as kick-ass and viral potential, but I'm not complaining about that. 
Thankfully I got past all of the comparisons and managed to actually find the love and appreciation that I should have had for it when this song came out. Because combination of styles or no, that doesn't mean that this isn't a great song, nor should it hinder my enjoyment of it. Thankfully I got past my feelings from when this song first came out and I was able to appreciate it for the great tune that it is. And I suspect there's more great tunes to come. And finally, to close out this video, we have one of my favorite songs from one of my favorite albums of the year. This is Knox by The Gazette. So, The Gazette is a visual caveman from Japan. You may recognize them as the guys who sang The Invisible Wall, or if you watch anime at all, you may recognize them as the guys who made the theme song to the second season of Black Butler, aka Kuroshitsuji. Anyways, this angelic piece of metal comes with nice riffs, solid synth work, as well as the catchiest violin melody I've heard on any metal song. Ruki sans vocals are as phenomenal as ever, and the lyrics, once you translate them into English, may seem like a vague and disconnected set of lyrics like you find on your average Fallout Boy song. But once I connected words and phrases like bloodshot eyes, sway, and flickering light, I got a very different impression. Especially when looking at the line, your eyes as beautiful as if you're drowning. All of a sudden, this looks less like a disconnected little song and more like a guy walking around in a drunken stupor, potentially insulting his lover by whatever is in the lyrics, swaying in his steps and not in his words. And said lover seems to reply to them in the pissed off grandeur you might expect. Oh, come on, do not argue with me now. Great little song. Definitely check it out if you can, especially the rest of Mass. And that's all the songs I have for this morning. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you have any other song suggestions for me, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'll read all of them, and if I like any of them, you may just see them in next week's episode, or any of the other weeks. Real quick, I just want to give a shout out to my supporters on Patreon, as well as give a special thank you to Louis Rivera, Matt Jenkins, Nick Cage, Ryan Eister, and Temple. Thank you all so much for your support. Also, a very special thank you to my translator, Kayla, who was kind enough to translate the Gazette's lyrics for me. She's a quick and efficient translator. I could tell by reading the lyrics that everything was consistent and that she knew what she was doing. So, if you want to check out Kayla and have her translate anything Japanese for you, her information will be in the description box below. I'll see you pups again for whatever crazy video I do next, but until then, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope y'all have a howling good time. Ooh!